Hi, welcome back to Electrox. At the moment, I have got Technivore, who've just completely and utterly destroyed the Resistance dance floor like I've never seen before. So, well done, guys. As you can probably tell from my voice, um, Petrol Bastard was the first interview I've done this weekend. This is the second. And you can probably tell from my voice how good that was. So, um, not only have we got Technivore, of course, but we've got Matt Hart, so please... Um, Tell those people who may not know much about you a little bit about yourselves and what you are, what you do. Uh, okay, I started uh, Technovore uh, four years ago now, I guess, um, right at the beginning of the whole COVID thing, the quarantine. Uh, so actually the silver lining to that was that I had a lot of time on my hands to uh, get this project off the ground. And um, I, th I think I've mentioned this to you before actually was that my mission statement was just to um, take a bunch of elements from genres that I like and see if I could uh, turn them into something cohesive, something that made sense and have fun with it. That was, that was it. Industrial mixed with trance is something that's happening a lot more recently, but you're definitely in the forefront of it, I think. It is, but like, I don't, I don't mind cheesy, but I don't want my stuff to be cheesy. It's got to make, it's got to be industrial first and trance second. And obviously, we we know about Matt Hart. He's uh, a legend who seems to hardest working man in the scene. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, hardest working man in the scene. Just the so, well, yeah. so questions wise, then. So, tell us about your recent release, George, and the thoughts behind the tracks. Well, my most recent releases were a couple of uh, singles we did last year. Um, we uh, kind of pushed those out to uh, to get them out before. Uh, yeah, we wanted to, to get something out before that and um, I've actually been working non-stop pretty much on my second album. In the meantime, um, it got a bit behind schedule. I had hopes to have it out before the end of 2023, but it didn't happen and that's fine because I'm not going to put any deadlines on myself, you know, when it's, when it's done, it's done. And I've also had a few collaboration tracks come out recently. The first was with uh, Draven, oh, yeah. if you've heard of him. He did a fucking awesome album. Uh, came out about 10 days ago, two weeks ago. Uh, and I did a, a, a sort of side trance inspired uh, track with him. Uh, big, big bass line, you know, and his orchestral stuff on top it worked really well i mean if i do say so myself quite happy with that so good <laughs> and my most recent release would be the remix i did for matt right here it mm -hmm. was that's not been out a week yet no it came out, came monday. out on monday yeah and uh Perfect timing. feedback's been been great on that i really like it you know i mean i like all my music but mm -hmm. i like some more than than others and i'm really happy with how how that turned out mm -hmm. People thanks, for having, thanks for letting me uh, indulge me in, in having that on the show tonight. <laughs> oh, well, I knew it was fucking great, so uh, why not? Yeah, know? yeah, it's great. Um, yep, yeah, that's what I've done up till now. So, Nick, is what is the most important part of creating music to you? Um, okay, so I've kind of altered my mission statement, and I'm thinking of the music I'm making now as... Uh, it's gonna, it doesn't sound like it makes sense. It makes sense to me. Euphoric industrial, which would seem to be two opposite things, uh, in the sense that this music makes me happy. When I listen to this music, it, it, you know, when I listen to some good music, it makes my day. And that's what I want to give to other people. I want other people to have fun when they're listening to my music and give them that adrenaline rush, that, that push. So euphoric industrial. Okay. And are you working on anything in the moment and what plans do you have with your sort of future releases? So the album is ready. 
So uh, album's ready. Uh, probably going to be out fairly soon. Um, May, possibly. But the definite thing is, uh, is the single, the, the track we did with Biomechanimal. That'll be out a uh, couple weeks from now on the 19th of April. That should be announced this, this upcoming week. And then we've got one more single after that before we, we do the album. So we're, we're kind of pushing them out in fairly quick succession, but I'm happy to do that because I've already feel like I've delayed it pretty, pretty much more than I would have liked. Yeah, and when you say obviously music that makes you happy and um, the people you've got joining you like by the kind of um, for those people listening at home, we've just had not only Matt Hard join Technical, but we've um, had Grab Your Face, Seraphim System, um, uh, Biomechanimal as well. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, Jay, that, I'm sad about that because, uh, well, more than anything, I just wanted to hang out with him again, you know, we <laughs> yeah. wanted to see him again, but uh, he was here in spirit for sure. Indeed. And he sent me a nice message this morning wishing me luck, so. And obviously he um, recommended that people watch you today um, on our website, but um, Thank you. I don't think I, let alone anyone else, was prepared for hard, how hard you just kicked our asses. So. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Mm. And uh, what moment, obviously, with Technical made you realize that you wanted to make this music and what were your first steps in doing it? Well, music is basically what I like doing. So in my free time, I'm always making music. And um, th there wasn't ever a time when I thought that I wouldn't. It's been my life for over 20 years now. Um, yeah. It's, it's just what I do, you know. It's who I am is make making music, and I'm, I don't think I'll, I'll ever stop. Even if I stop releasing music, I'll probably still be making music for the sake of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, with technical, what sort of legacy do you want to leave behind for people? What sort of impact do you want it to leave? Again, I just want people to to, to have fun. Uh, it's a pretty shitty world we live in, so if someone listens to one of my tracks and it makes their day a little better I feel like that's mission accomplished that's what I want to put just a little bit of happiness back into the world in the way that I can okay. and a question for both of you if you could ask any artist living or dead one question to help with your career what would that be? probably ask someone big to take me on tour with them but uh, <laughs> <laughs> please uh, um, I don't know I don't have anything do you have anything specific in mind I don't know it's a kind of question you'd need to think about it for a little bit like what 
Yeah, off the top of my head, like maybe I'd ask different people some, you know, technical stuff, you know, how they how they did a certain thing in one of their tracks, maybe something like that, but nothing major pops into my head right now. That's fair enough. Okay. Well, um, another way then, if holodecks like on Star Trek were real, okay. what would you spend most of your time in? Uh, okay. Uh, Safer work answers only. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, um, you know, completely non-music thing. But when I was younger, I loved playing basketball, and I can't do that anymore because everything hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'd probably uh, relive the, the the glory days uh, of being able to actually, you know. Uh, play a bit of ball and uh, not feel like I'm dying for the next three days. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Matt? So, um, I created, with my own music, I created a world um, set in the future, 3808, um, and the, 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 the inhabitants of our world live below the surface, below the terror, uh, in the deep down city. Um, and part of what I do there is actually stream to the future on my Twitch shows. But we stream from basically what is like a holodeck um, and so I, it'd be really, inter really interesting if we had that right now to be able to project that future that, I, that I've created in the future to right now to be able to live that world that I've created. Yeah. It'd be really interesting like what, what it's like in a, you know, in, a, in, a, in a civilization below the planet, below the planet's core, uh, surface where you know, there's just tunnels and there's no natural light, it's tunnels and terraform farms and, and you know, deep black abysses, you know. But it, it'd be interesting. I think I think to be able to create my own world within a hollow deck like that would be pretty cool. That's a better answer. Right? Can I change my answer now? Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm going to say pretty deep and philosophical. Yeah. You know, I, I like to shoot some hoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Okay. And let's say you worked with NASA and they demanded that you both choose an album each to be sent off into the next space probe to explain to aliens what is important. Um, so the albums that made me fall in love with industrial music were Frontline Assemblies Millennium, uh, Decoded Feedbacks BioVital. Those two were the first ones I bought. So either one of those uh, would be my choice, mm -hmm. I think. I'd go with the Fear Factory Demanufacture. It's such a like. And riffs for days. Yeah, exactly. And it was, you know, that the, the the harsh vocal and the clean vocal is kind of what I've always tried to do. And like, you know, that's that album is just so synonymous with that sound. Body Hammer. That's one of the best mm -hmm. riffs of all time. Mm -hmm. Super simple, but yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And and I'd probably say Skinny Puppy's uh, Greater Wrong of the Right. It was the album that got me into Skinny Puppy, although it wasn't, you know quite like their older sound it was you know well it was slightly more polished of a sound but it, it, it's a great like track to track it's a really really good album nice. okay and a couple of silly ones now so if you could take something that was currently uh, legal and make it illegal because you hate it what would it be why <sighs> fucking minions <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hate minions. I can't stand them. Thankfully, my my daughter has uh, uh, outgrown the cartoon phase, so I don't have to put up with that bullshit anymore. I don't know. Why I hate those those things. It's maybe it's because they were everywhere and they were they were like all these boomer memes with with minions and them. Oh, gotcha. and, and right wing run away with that. Didn't and it just like. Um, en uh, encapsulated for me what was like good in a in a small dose. And then we, we t oh, that's popular. Let's like fucking turn it up to 11 to the point where it's like everywhere and you can't get away from it. And I don't know, they just rub me the wrong way. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you wanted a silly one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no offense to anyone that has cats. Cats are cute, but cat picks, illegal. I don't know if we can be friends anymore. No, I probably wow. have. <laughs> lost a lot of friends at this moment. <laughs> no more cat pics. Oh. Okay. And if you had to cover a cheesy or classic Christmas song, 
Which Christmas. one would it be that you would turn industrial? And Mr. Blobby. <laughs> Is Mr. That... Blobby did a Christmas song. Yeah, it was, well, it wasn't a Christmas song. It was Christmas number one, wasn't it? Uh, oh no, it's be a Christmas. Song. All right, Christmas song. Oh. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas just because I like singing it to myself, and it's it's a really cheesy song. Dreaming of a black. Dreaming of a black. Maybe I do the the Joker's version of uh, Jingle Bells from the Batman cartoon. Mm. I sing that to my daughter to annoy her. (laughs) So (laughs) that one. Get get Mark Hamill in and get him to reprise his. uh, his performance. Nice. Okay, cool. And uh, yeah, do you have anything you'd like to say to your fans? Is that Mark Hamill? It might not be that particular one. Anyway, um, anything particular to say to my fans? Just, just thank you guys. You know, it's um, it always seems unreal to me that people uh, like my music uh, more than I do, because right? I'm I'm the I, a lot of artists will say this isn't the case, but I do make music for myself. I'm the first person that has to like it. If I don't like it, I don't care how how good someone else might say it is. I'm not putting it out. So uh, just I'm just really, really thankful that everyone enjoys it. And um, it makes me really happy. And I feel like I'm doing a good thing. Thanks to everyone who came along to the show today. If Lovely. you were here at Resistance 2024 and saw Technovore, thank you. Lovely yeah. people. Lovely. Big, big smile Lovely on my face the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you both ever so much for not only melting my brain, but for joining me in this interview. Our pleasure. Cool. Thank you guys for watching.